young people from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part, too. <laughs> They're doing their part. Are you? Join the mobile infantry and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. Are you doing your part? Hi guys, welcome to Factorio. This is a game I've actually been really excited to do. I've uh, played it on stream many, many times, and we're doing a bit of a challenge run here, which is a desert death world marathon, which I'll, uh, if you're not too familiar with the game, I'll, I'll get into kind of what, why that's a little bit more difficult. But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say this is a new player friendly LP. It's more of like a challenge run LP. Um, there's plenty of AP, uh, other people who've done LPs of this game and runs and whatever that probably would be no, more new player friendly, but I'll try and explain some of the concepts. Just know that this is mostly an engineering game, and uh, the way I'm playing it turns it from an engineering game into something completely different. Uh, well, it's still an engineering game, but it becomes more about like strategy and things like that, so it's kind of fun. Uh, so just to tell you, we're not running any mods. It's just some stuff I had from version 15, uh, which I disabled in 16 and never put it on since. Um, I've tried things like Bob's and Angels and all that and didn't really click with me. I didn't like it all that much. I, I kind of like... The vanilla, vanilla experience plus maybe a couple of like other changes here and there. That's kind of how I like playing this game. Um, it's just how I am. And so, but so I am aware of the existence of the mods. I used a couple of them, um, and I know I know. And if I complain about anything, and then someone goes like, "Oh shit, there's a mod for that." Yeah, there probably is a mod for everything, but I, I still I, I like to criticize the the vanilla game because I'm a uh, I'm a shitty game critic or something. No, I'm not, but whatever. So we're, we're playing on version 16.16, so as of this uh, version, um, so this is way past the uh, fluid mechanics changes, which is like the um, the fluid wagon on trains. It now counts as one storage tank, uh, barrels hold a lot less. I have not uh, tried uh, to see how that works now, but because I actually do use that stuff, but we'll see how that works. I'm actually interested to see, so uh, this may be a, uh, a, a spectacular failure of a run, but we'll see. Oh, so that's the first thing I want to mention. Um, uh, so yeah, we're on the we're on the new stuff kind of ish, uh, which is which plays into why we're doing the desert kind of uh, death world in this run. Uh, so let's get started with uh, arranging our game. So I'll go through most of the settings. And I'll kind of explain a lot of how they how they work. So we're this is the default mode uh, for the game, and so resources are normal, medium, regular. You can put it up to. Very, so basically frequency is how often they appear, size is how big the resource pocket will be, and richness is how much resources it will have. So the more you add to the richness, the more uh, the more the, 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 the resources will not deplete. Um, you know, that's just kind of how that works. Um, terrain settings, you have your starting area, which is basically how much of your starting area is cleared by, uh, that isn't inhabited by biters. Biters is the enemy of the game. The biters hate pollution and will attack you, um, so that's the, kind of how they work. Uh, when the pollution reaches, when your pollution cloud reaches them, they'll attack you. Uh, you have water, frequency size, um, and then you have a bunch of terrain here, like grass, dirt, sand, desert. Trees, the, the, the natural enemy of, our, of this game, um, also exists here. And the enemy base is, is how many bases they have, um, and cliffs. Uh, Cliffs is actually a new concept in in, in sixteen. Um, it's ba it basically counts as a impassable terrain, although you can destroy it later in the game. Uh, we will be playing it with with them off because they also count as a natural defense, which I I feel like it would make the game easier for me, especially since I could just destroy them later if they're in the way. Like you know, that's kind of how I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually have them off. Um, okay, and the last thing here is uh, so we have pollution on enemy expansion. I was just showing you some of these settings. Now, take note of these numbers for evolution. So evolution is um, a concept in the game. So the way they make the biters harder, or the enemies harder in this game, is through three factors. Time, destroy, and pollution. Destroying is when you destroy their nests or bases. Uh, pollution is how much pollution. The global pollution, by the way. It's not pollution that reaches them. It's any pollution you put into the into the air, uh, regardless of dissipation or not. Um, it factors into pollution into the evolution factor. And then time, which is something obviously you cannot control, uh, other than going faster. 
So these is how, this is how much each uh, thing affects it. I know these numbers kind of look a little bit odd, but the the higher the evolution goes in the game, um, the more tougher the biters get. So that's that's just how that works. Um, and then we have recipe difficulty, uh, technology difficulty. So when you put things on expensive mode, um, mostly it's like the baseline items, uh, like gears and microchips and shit, um, things that are used to make other things become immeasurably more expensive. This is how it works. Um, and then there's technology price modifier as well, which is uh, interesting. And so if I actually generate a preview here, you get a kind of an idea. And by the way, I'm just showing off like how this works and how the how the resources work um, and how like a default game would look opposed to whatever. So yeah, you got a couple bases here. Like we would start in the middle here. I don't see water there, but I yeah, don't no, actually would be right here. So like this little starting area like that I'm kind of trying to make with my mouse. That's kind of how uh, we would be. Now you got some copper here, which is the orange stuff. A lo very large deposit of stone here. Uh, you know, some iron here. Um, you got some oil up here that you can easily expand to. You know, there's a fair bit of stuff uh, around here that you can do. But we're not playing that, um, obviously. So we're playing on something called Death World Marathon. Um, so the changes here are the resources remain the same. I don't feel the need to change the resources because as of this patch, uh, they've made the resources more spread out. However, they are more rich, so you don't have to make as many bases, but you do have to go farther out for them. Which is good, actually, because nobody likes making little outposts everywhere. Um, it, honestly, that's, that's the most boring part of the game, is setting up resources. Um, so, the Death World settings, um, as you can see here, are size small. Um, this is the default Death World settings. Enemy base is very high, size very big, and richness regular. You can put the richness up, but I don't think it really makes it... Like it's it's just whatever. I I I I'm, it's hard enough. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> okay, and so the other thing that makes this very difficult is uh, evolution. Uh, if you look, the time factor is way up. The pollution factor is a little bit up. Uh, destroy factor basically remains the same, but there's more bases, so that goes up as well in a way. Um, so yeah, so basically, no matter what you do, they're gonna evolve basically like four times as fast. And oh, and all the technologies are expensive. All the recipes are expensive, and technology price modifier uh, multiplier is four. So all the researches are four times more expensive. Uh, so you just need four times more <laughs> resources or something for that. Everything else is basically the same though. Um, and if we generate a preview of this, you kind of see how oh this one this one's a variation with cliffs. So there's like uh, this is uranium here, uh, coals, the black stuff, uh, things like that. So you can see like. It's made now my starting area much, much lower, and it's also added, um, like, a lot of bases around here. Uh, so that's just, this is what Death World is. Um, so they will expand, and they will aggressively... Well, I mean, usually, usually what you do in this sort of scenario is this is actually not that bad. Um, so, like, usually water is a nice natural defense, so, I mean, you could just regenerate until you find, like, a scenario where, you know, water is nice and defensible or something like that, you know... For some reason, I'm actually getting all the desert death worlds right now. <laughs> Even though that's what I said in my, my scenario. Um, anyways, it's usually what you do. Um, I'm just checking to make sure I didn't change anything. So, that's usually what you do, is you just kind of lay low. You know, you'd find a nice map where you can get all access to all the resources. Lay low until you get your defenses up. Just make a couple of defensive turrets and things like that. And then and eventually just get to the point where you can defend yourself and win the game. That's not what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to play on desert. And the reason why it's such a substantial thing, um, particularly sand, actually. Um, when, it, when you see sand and desert here, it's sand is actually like a darker tile. It's actually kind of interesting. I can, I can show you real, uh, real fast. So I'm going to just turn off um, whoops, water. We're going to have to set to very small. Uh, just because... Or do I want like frequency very low? I don't know. See, the thing is, when I do this, I don't ever see a water spawn anywhere else. Anyways, so this is what Desert does. So kind of like the pinkish one is kind of like kind of sand, I think. Uh, not really sand. And then the, the the really dark stuff is like dark desert. It's like, and it's, it looks more like a dirt. It's, it's really weird. Um, so that doesn't really fit the theme that I wanted to go with here. So we're actually going to do sand, but... I know it says desert death world, but it's like when you think of desert, like most people just think of sand and shit like that. But like I don't know, whatever. False advertising. Go for, like, 
I don't, I don't fucking care. I, I mean, it's uh, listen. The the difference between um, so the the reason this is so difficult is is because grass and dirt um, and and trees have very good pollution dissipation. So the pollution doesn't actually reach the enemy bases uh, that quickly. Um, desert and and sand have very little pollution dissipation. Mind you, sand is slightly better at, at pollution dissipation, so it's technically be becoming slightly easier. But, I mean, whatever, fucking sue me, I, I don't care. <laughs> it's 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 good enough uh, for like trust me, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard enough. It's like it, it's whatever, man. All right, so we're also going to set trees to as low as possible. Um, now, you may have looked over here and said, Wow, Mike, it says none here. Why don't you put none? Well, uh, you can't win the game with none. Um, it, the game is impossible, actually. Uh, in, in this current state. I don't know why they added this. Because, um, honestly, I would have done this if it was possible, but it's not. Because you need wood for power. Um, as weird as that sounds. You don't need it to, to, to work the um, uh, machines. You don't need it for that. You you need it to essentially uh, uh, make power poles because there's no other way of making them. Apparently, you can't make like one out of stone or something. It's weird, but that's that's my disappointment because I actually would have totally played this on none if I could, but I can't. So uh, we're playing on very small instead. And even though I have everything, the trees as low as can possibly go, it actually still spawns like a ton of them. Like look at that. that's like a, like that's a forest right there. Yes. So as you can see, the map generation. I'll explain a bit more about that, but uh, actually, I think I will because I think we're basically this is essentially what we want because it's basically just only generating sand, it's not generating anything else, and there's nothing else we want to change. So I'll explain a bit how the map generation works here. So in Death World, uh, particularly Desert De Death World, you want to spawn with oil that's accessible, and especially with the new uh, version sixteen algorithm for making these maps, um, it, it's hit and miss. Um, I think this is the one thing, if I can criticize the game, that it needs to work on. Um, like right here, you can actually see it's like a little bit of an iron patch there, but it's like, it's, it's, it merged with like the water. So you don't actually get the iron patch. So what I've been able to tell with how the algorithm works for how to generate, um, like resources, what the game will always do is it will attempt to spawn iron, copper, coal, and a bit of stone in your starting area, right beside the and and obviously water, because um, those are the things you need to even get started. The problem is the way their algorithm works for like generating these patches is they're not consistent, um, and they also they also will overlap each other occasionally, and you'll see that from time to time. If I actually look around, this is what yeah right there. What one is kind of. Um, on top of each other, that might be actually another piece of stone there or something. They kind of don't have a way of handling that, um, which is, you know, I, I don't, I guess it's kind of hard to do that mathematically or whatever. I'm trying, trying to find better examples of, uh, of this happening. But yeah, so like occasionally what will happen is you will not get one of the resources in your starting area. And also... They don't count oil as something that you need to start with. So you might get a scenario like this one, at least you get a little bit of oil, but there might be one that's like uh, really, really bad. I mean, this is also accessible, but there's some that are like the oil is just non-existent, even in like the starting area here. So those are not good. Um, and as you can see, like even though I have trees on the lowest, you can tell like they're just all over the damn place. It's so, like I, I can maybe eventually find one that like you know, it, it takes a while, you know, to find one that, that basically is perfect in that sense. And, um, but I, I think, I think honestly to do, to have a good start at Death World, and, and I think, and I, I firmly believe this is not like, like against the rules of whatever arbitrary scenario I've thought up here. I didn't change the resource spawn rate, uh, but you, I think it's fine for me to go and, and generate an ideal um, resource, like, like having things near me. Because um, you do need an extra, you do you do need an extra iron source. Um, copper, you just need like one, and having coal and stuff ex like nearby and accessible is also kind of nice as well. So you like if you're doing this scenario with me, uh, you're more than welcome to to press regenerate as many times as you want. Um, I'm not gonna, yeah, this one actually would be not bad um, in the slightest. Uh, fuck. 
Maybe I'll just do this. <laughs> Dude, I just, I just I just pressed this randomly. Um, I actually had a seed prepared, I won't lie. Um, I prepared a seed, and I was going to use it, except we have no stone here. We may have stone. I don't know. It yeah, stone looks like this, so... Is that stone right there? If that's stone, I might as well just fucking do this. And, yeah, I mean, that iron's down there, but... Fuck it. Okay, so I, I, I was gonna say, I have a I have a seed prepared already. Um... But, you know what? Fuck it, this is good enough, actually. You know, you know I'm, I'm fine with this, I don't care. Shit, let's do it, okay. We break net now and take you live to Clendafu, where the invasion has begun. The XQ uplink on. Two, one, you're on. We've just landed here on what count troopers are calling on, Big K. The Sixth Global Infantry Division. It's an ugly planet. A sub planet. A planet hostile to life. <laughs> Okay, so apparently we're gonna just uh, use whatever seed I just fucking got like that. So, welcome to the game. Oh, there's a base right there already. That's good. Oops. Did I? I started pressing arrow keys because I was playing Civ the other day. So, is there... Oh, there is a stone patch there. It's a very shitty stone patch, but it is a stone patch. So, we're gonna put this guy right here. So this is our first burner drill in Stone Furnace, and we need some wood. So let's go get some... Let's go get us some wood. So I was gonna say, um, all I want is some, you know, some, some fucking oil and, and basic resources next to me. And I wasn't actually gonna spend any more time, um, this is kind of how I had it worked out in my head. I wasn't gonna spend any more time, uh, uh, making, uh, uh, regenerating maps, but then I found that one. I'm like, oh, okay, fine, we'll just do that one. So, you know, you just find one you like, and then you go do it, and that's it. Alright, anyways, so I got, I got wood now. Um, and this one actually spawned with less trees than my seed did, so... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Whatever, man. Uh, good times. Good times. Good times. So we start with an iron patch down there, some coal over here. I still don't really know how I'm gonna handle this, but whatever. I, like, I don't, I don't have plans for this. All right, so some of the concepts of this game that we should kind of get into. So, um, so this is a stone furnace burner drill. Um, burner drills require gears, stone furnaces, and plates. And then, if you make, if you handcraft an item, it will automatically uh, make any of the prerequisite items because, like, gears are for iron plates. Uh, in in standard mode um, and not expensive, it is two iron plates. And iron plates are made from obviously uh, these these ore patches, as you can see, like they have amounts and it's uh, it's transferred directly into an iron plate as I put it into a furnace. So the, what you saw me doing there earlier, um, and also I'm just gonna make all those stone furnaces because it just requires stone. Um, so I have the the iron on top of this, it says expected resources 1.3, and then uh, this is now making iron plates, I can actually take it out. So it's just feeding it with the arrow pointing towards the furnace, it's feeding it directly into the furnace. Um, pretty much all there is to that. Uh, this is some coal here. Just a random spurt of coal. So we're just kind of waiting for some plates because we're trying to make another one. Because this is uh, this is kind of the early game for us, so uh, nothing too death rolledy right now. Um, we got a bit of time before uh, we start getting fucked up by uh, biters. There we go. Ah, uh, shit. I just realized that we have no... I have no wood. Okay, we may need to go get ourselves some more wood. Um, usually, usually some of the stone will sometimes have, um... Uh, have some coal in it, and that's something new that they've added, but now it's dark and I can't see shit, so I guess, I guess that doesn't matter now. I, I kind of skimmed around. I guess we're just gonna find the wood, just because, whatever. So, wood is a very shitty fuel source, um, but it's the one that we have right now. This is what this little forest is here for. Alright, we're gonna make a, a wooden chest as well. Um, so, 
It is it is a game completely about automation. It's an engineering game, so it should be fun. I, as I said, I may do a crappy job at explaining things, and it's for no other reason the fact that this is a game that requires a lot of uh, attention, and um, I may not be perfect at it um, uh, in terms of like explaining things to you because we're g we're gonna be all over the place. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so you can actually see my pollution cloud already, uh, and it's like doing its thing. Um, and it will not expand unless I build more things, so that's just kind of how it works. So I'm, I'm going to work on uh, iron next, but yeah, we need more gears. Actually, we have most of the gears. And so right now, I just spend my time destroying these kind of these rocks right here. Because there's really no reason for me not to just get some stone here, I guess. The stone is kind of like a baseline resource. We need it for a lot of things. Uh, well, not, well, just mostly furnaces. It's actually not that, it's end walls. It's not that important that early on, so it's okay. We'll make use of it at some point, I'm sure. But like this way, we, we actually, this is why we don't actually technically need to have right next to us like a, um, like a, like a, like a stone repository, which is why like the eight AK stone I saw, and then there's like some more down here. I'm like, yeah, that's good enough. Like, I'm, we're gonna probably be suffering at some point, but yeah. Alright, so let's try and get this guy going. Because I'm kind of tired of uh, this. Okay. Alright, let's put that guy in there. Fortunately, these all need coal. Oh, we can make another burn drill. Oh, yeah. So usually I, usually I don't do this thing where I have this stupid ass box here. Um, usually what I do is to continuously farm this stuff. I put another one there. So one of the things you can do, a little trick or tip from your good old friend uh, Mike Ladd is that these two things are pointing into each other so they'll actually keep feeding each other coal. Um, so this is actually good enough for right now at least. So that's gonna get us some coal because the thing is in this game you don't want to if you're manually if you're ever manually doing something um, you basically the first question you should always ask yourself is uh, why am I doing this myself is there a way to automate it um, and in Death World it's should I spend time automating this or am I going to die if I do that so uh, crude oil so these are oil patches big sandy rocks yeah I don't think we're gonna bother too much more with it, that stuff. So that's kind of how the game works. Um, so yeah, right now we're just getting kind of baseline resources. So it's like, you know, like a very modest Minecraft-esque start. As if you've... Uh, I know, I know, I know uh, Minecraft is this uh, this fucking indie game that nobody's ever heard of, but you know. And, and and there's a lot of people going like, what what's that? But trust me, I know what I'm talking about. All right, let's do this. All right. So we're just trying to bring up more iron because we're trying to scale up our, our resources like really fast. And I gotta, I wonder how, this is like pathetic how low this stone is, but we're gonna just have to deal with them, so. It's a sad story uh, for me, but uh, we're just gonna have to put up with that, so. Um, as I said, we're gonna probably just go kill this nest right here. So the trees do a little bit of pollution dissipation as well, so we can have fun with that as well. Uh, so that should be good times. Uh, so like I'm, I'm right, I'm right now just like loading coal and teas and we're just manually doing all of this. So as I kind of, I'm just kind of peering into a lot of these burner drills and seeing what they have. And then we have to then start concerning ourselves with, uh, some other stuff. So I'm just trying to get our guys going as much as possible. Oh yeah. Throughout this, um, uh, series, I will cut out things that are like, um, that, that's just me placing shit for too long. Um, I mean, I'm not doing this one because I'm, I'm not, I'm not cutting out anything out here because I'm, I'm, I'm talking, so I don't care. Uh, but if, if it's something like, like, cause this game does have a little bit of tedium with regards to, oh, you gotta basically sp spend time placing like 15,000 burner drills. Oh, what do you do? Well, not burner drills, sorry. We're basically not even going to use burner drills past like... When it's on the initial stages of this game. Uh, let's see. 
we're trying to now upgrade our our production here. Where is there? Alright. And then now we have this thing going for. So if I actually press Alt, it'll actually show me like uh, what's in things and the arrows that things are pointing in. So you can see that now this is like now it's like a now they're all feeding each other. So this is enough coal for now, believe it or not. This will feed us indefinitely, at least for the for the time being. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. And usually the the magic number I go for is I go for um, six of these. Six of these burner drills. Oh, this guy's low. So, sorry, six of that six doing iron, and then we're gonna make. Um, I think like. Uh, also, if I was smart, I would have like made them all in the line. So I just like hold down my click, but whatever. Uh, and then we're gonna go for just a couple up here for iron, uh, for copper. We actually don't need copper this early on that that much. So, um, and we're gonna keep it all in one place just because we need to keep it all in one place. Debating how to do a lot of this setup, but man, this is gonna suck. I honestly did not plan for this to work out the way it did with the seed, but whatever. I mean, I'm I'm okay with this. All right, so we're gonna go over here and take these two guys. Okay, apparently I may not have brought a lot of coal with me. But it's okay, because that's what it is. So this right here, this layout that I have, is in my tried and true tested perfect ratio of um, of burner drills for science. Well, it's, it's not science. It's, I didn't do any math for this, okay? I just it, I went, went based upon feelings, but this is what I normally do. Because I always find that this is the perfect ratio that the biters don't fucking attack me. Um, I may actually be able to make a little bit more, but we, the thing is we can't actually see what's down there, so... And we're also about to make, um, boilers and steam engines. I figure we can get power going and that will be fun. Alright, so... In this game, uh, we need power. Um, and we're also going to get some power poles. So, uh, steam engines require a crap ton of, um, iron. Basically, that's it. Uh, and... So that, that's why we have so much iron production, because like the gears and the 50 iron, pl 50 iron plates is ridiculous. Um, that's why like we don't really need to scale the, cop the copper at all until like a little bit later. Probably like episode 3 or whatever the fuck I do. Uh, but we do have small electric poles, so we're going to make all of those. And we're going to need some pipes, and we're going to need... Uh, where's the offshore pump? So we have an offshore pump coming down the pipe. Alright, now everything's out of fucking juice, so we need to now put some fucking bullshit in. Fuck. Fuck. Not mean to do that. Okay, now it's fucking not taking that. Alright. Uh, so we need some pipes, and now I need to figure out where I'm gonna put this thing. Probably down here, actually. That seems like a good place. All right. This is actually a recent change they did to this game. Like the the pipes became fatter. I'm not sure why they did that, but whatever. But that's a good place for it. So we're gonna put it right there. Get some more iron plates. And uh, I'll explain to you a little bit about pipe mechanics in this game, because it's actually kind of interesting. So um, you see this is, a, this is an underground pipe. And uh, it goes as far as you want. And you have regular pipes. And the reason why you do an underground pipe is I can't actually move past this. Uh, so to make it as easily accessible for me to get around things, uh, that's what we kind of have to do. Um, it's a sad story. Uh, but that's kind of what's required. And did I make a boiler? I did make a boiler. So, oh yeah, I, I ghosted these because uh, I was just trying to get, or uh, no, I was measuring it out actually. I thought I had another one, but apparently I didn't. And I also do not have enough uh, resources here. So let's just keep feeding these guys. And we're just gonna make sure that everything has enough power. And we're gonna get our first power in. So we use steam engines in this game, uh, which is pretty freaking, uh, 
Oh, they're, they're steam engines. Uh, and I am wondering how to do this. Maybe I should just move it on to the other side. By the way, you can remove things in this game and replace them, and the game does not uh, bat an eye. It does not matter to it. Actually, I, I could have just done this. So here you can see that there's the water input port, and then it outputs steam up there. We feed it some, uh, some coal, and then that's our steam engines. Now, here's the thing. Steam engines themselves do not actually make pollution. They just use steam. Um, the thing that makes the pollution is the boiler, which ha uses uh, um, coal right there. You see, it's actually generating a pollution of uh, 27. So we're, we just raised our pollution, uh, but now these need to be connected, and then we can now concern ourselves with science. And also, we need more coal. So we need more copper. So microchips are a big giant pain in the ass. Like you can see like I have to make 50 fucking copper cables in order to make these chips. So um, it's a sad day for for the Empire or fucking, uh, sorry, the Federation. When I have to make so many freaking copper cables, but you know, that's, that's life. So I usually go with uh, the good old uh, two, which is a nice round number. I like the number two. Right, let's also put some more. Put some more coal in these things. By the way, we're not going to be doing this forever, obviously. Um, this is just for now. Uh, this is how we do things. Because uh, until we get to automating everything, then this is just how, how things have to be. All right. So as you can see, when we added that steam engine, uh, our pollution cloud almost reached up there. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's how things go. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just life for you. Now, the thing is that these things are smart, so nothing is actually using power, so it actually stops using the coal. Uh, but I don't think that necessarily stops its pollution generation, and I, and I can actually almost guarantee you that it doesn't do that. Then we need to make science packs. And then, uh, then we're gonna get into science. Do I have time to explain science? Of course I have time to explain science. All right, so science, if we press T, um, we have this. Um, it's a giant tree of science. It's, it's confusing, I know, uh, but let me just explain to you. Um, so the tree, the, the tree is actually a research tree. Um, so we can actually see the baseline for automation is just right here. Uh, so this is like, we get to make assembling machines, which we need. Uh, Long-handed inserters, or if I go to optics, it starts with optics and solar energy, which is a meme and we won't use in Desert Death World because it does it's not very helpful for us here. We can get into laser turrets and military tech and some other stuff. But this also has some prerequisites. So if you actually look at this, if we actually press on military three, um, even though optics and lasers are a prerequisite, it also has a prerequisite of military two and military one and things like that. So the tree is confusing. Uh, so it's better just to kind of look on this side because this just kind of shows you what's actually available And then everything else in red is like a prerequisite. It needs something else So if we just ignore that we just go like okay, we can make automation. That's good uh, We can have lamps uh, probably not so good uh, We can have gun turrets. Oh, that's pretty good. We can make walls. Oh, yeah uh, What else uh, shotguns and some machine guns and shotgun shells hmm steel processing? Uh, logistics which is underground belts fasters and splitters. Oh, that's all very good. So we're going to start with automation, and you see it requires um, science packs, uh, science pack ones, actually. Later on, we require other sources of uh, science packs, but we'll get into that later. And so it says it needs 10 seconds of one science pack, one for each, uh, for each lab. So if I do that, we're researching, and, and that goes to show, hey, you know, uh, science pack ones are actually a resource that you have to automate and generate to do all the, the heavy researches that require several thousands of them. So, just one of those like little interesting things um, that this game kind of has to offer. But we're, we're kind of doing automation because we, we're lazy, we don't want to be automating, uh, we don't want to be handcrafting shit at, at any point in this game, honestly. Let's gonna make sure that keeps going. Did I take, uh, no, I don't need copper. So yeah, it just requires a bit of resources to make this stuff. But uh, we'll, um, 
I'll I'll resume. I'll resume the LP. So we're gonna we're gonna take a break, and I'm gonna resume the LP pretty much when I just finish automation. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.